drone that flies away from the truck, delivering packages, reducing the time that you're out on your route, and increasing profits for the company. Now, this product is delivered by Workhorse, ticker symbol WKHS. Here's a picture side by side of the two vehicles that they're offering in their C series the C650 and the C1000. The numbers 650 and 1000 correspond to the cubic feet of storage each vehicle has to offer. Welcome back, YouTube. This is We Are Investing, and on this video, as you guys know, we're going to talk about Workhorse, the company for the working man. Now, Tesla provides EV vehicles for your personal use, but this company does not care about that. They're in the business of providing electric vehicles to companies that need them for their businesses. So this market is huge. With all that being said, let's switch you guys over to the computer screen and get rolling on the most recent earnings from Workhorse, their investors presentation, and let's just talk about the stock a little bit and learn a little bit more about the company. But before jumping on over to the computer screen, I'm going to be like every other YouTuber and ask that you hit that subscribe button, smash that like button, and add a comment below so we can open up a dialogue and get this channel growing. It really goes a long way in helping me better serve you, so please do so if you can. This video is being brought to my attention by a couple followers that mention or comment on other videos asking me to do a review on Workhorse. I think Workhorse is worth our time mentioning and reviewing. I don't think this video is going to get a ton of views because it is a company that's not on many people's radar, but whatever. It does not matter. That is not the purpose of this channel. This, the purpose of this channel is to help you grow and help you make money in investing. And if it's in a company that's not popular, so be it. It does not matter whatsoever. Let's go. Workhorse, work ahead. Um, to start this video, we're going to dive right into the investor presentation that was done in January of 2020. So not too long ago, just a couple months ago. Um, I'm going to forewarn you, this video is going to be jam-packed with information about this company. And it's going to go by pretty quick. To get started, we're going to slide down a little bit on the presentation. Um, to I think this is a good slide because right here really shows the three products that are going to make or break this company. The first one and the most important one in my opinion is that C1000 electric work van or the C650, the entire C series. The C series, in my personal opinion, is a product that has the potential to tap into many different businesses. It's mostly used as a delivery vehicle, but that's not stopping it from being used as a work van or potentially even modifying this to include a refrigerator and deliver produce or food. Now the C-Series 1000 has the capability of including the Horsefly UAV delivery system. It's pretty cool and Workhorse has a video of those two products working together. I will show that video later in this video um, because I think that provides a good explanation on the type of product this is and the potential it has. Now the last product but not the least product is the USPS Next Generation Delivery Vehicle this is has the potential to be absolutely huge but they need to win the contract with usps the one thing that scares me with this company is that the current price might have some pricing built in for them winning this contract and if they don't win the contract what's going to happen to the share price there's huge risk involved with them losing this contract because I do think a lot of investors are hopeful that they're going to win the contract and if they don't they're just going to leave ship. So it's something that has huge potential but it also brings a lot of risk with it because the stock might be weighed heavily in favor of them winning this contract. We'll have to take a look at the stock price and see how it's trading. This company is not profitable so they do not have a PE but we'll take a look at their books and see what they're doing. One final thing on this slide that I want to mention is regarding their C-Series work van. The most recent earnings call, the CEO did mention that in 2020, they will start production of the C-Series vehicle and hopefully get through their entire backlog. Jumping into an article that gives a number on their backlog, their backlog is estimated to be at 1,100 orders. Now, let's say a workhorse um, electric van costs you $50,000 and they're able to get through their um, backlog of 1,100 orders in the year 2020. How much revenue would that correspond to? 
So let's do the math. If I bring over the calculator, we had 1,100 orders times 50,000 is equal to $55 million. Keep that number in mind because we'll try to insert that number into the company's earnings report and see what kind of scale of impact that number has on the total revenue for this company. All right, guys, I promised you that I would show you the video of the Workhorse C1000 series truck with the combination of that horsefly, the drone that delivers packages right out of the truck. So with that being said, I'm going to get this video rolling. This video is from Workhorse itself. Um, it's 42 seconds long. We'll just watch all of it and then move on to the next part of this video. One thing I do need to mention when it comes to the workhorse and the horse fly. Right now, it can only deliver one package, but they're working on a patent that's going to allow them to deliver more than one package at one time. And through regulations, this is only um, if you can actually see the drone within sightline distance. Um, unfortunately, the regulations do not allow drone delivery out of sight. Um, but with that being said, that might be something that happens down the road. And even with the sight line distance delivery, it does help the driver deliver multiple packages at one time and allow the company to make more money. The bottom line, the bottom line of this company is whether or not this product will make other companies money. Can they sell this vehicle? If I own, let's say I work for Amazon, right? And I'm looking for a way to increase my delivery speed or decrease my capex when it comes to my delivery vehicles whether that's gas maintenance you know all those typical things does the c1000 vehicle help reduce cost and does the horsefly increase the speed of delivery enough that it makes it worthwhile adding to my um, delivery truck if those two things are no then this company won't succeed i personally think the c1000 series vehicle um, being that it's electric it's made out of composite um, it's going to have low maintenance because it's made out of composite it's going to have low labor costs to construct which helps the margins for workhouse and helps them provide a, a vehicle at a lower cost making it more appealing for a company to buy a huge fleet of these because one the initial cost will be lower because they're cheaper to make then two maintenance will be down so the amount of Cost that they have for maintenance will be lower and then labor on an electronic vehicle and will be less than a labor on an ICE so those three things together might entice a company to switch over to these electric vehicle delivery trucks um, and that's kind of being seen with the USPS looking for a contract on electric vehicles as well I don't doubt that 10 15 years from now we're going to have more EVs on the road, and these EVs aren't just going to be for personal use, but they're going to be also used for business, delivery service, stuff like this. So the workhorse company um, is in the right market. It's just whether or not they can succeed. This slide from the investor's presentation kind of piggy banks off of what I just mentioned and emphasizes the importance or the market size that workhorse is trying to tap into. So they're saying, more than 350,000 vehicles are purchased by the U.S. fleets annually. Vehicles along the lines of the ones you're seeing below here. They're calling last mile delivery vehicles. The average price or the estimated price is going to be $50,000 per vehicle. If you times that by that, your market is $18 billion per year or close to. That's the annual addressable market size for last mile delivery vehicles in the United States. That is absolutely huge. And if Workhorse can be the leader in this industry, which they're trying to be, and they're working hard to do so, 
the amount of money this company can make 10 years from now is astronomical. Okay, guys, the last slide and this slide are going to be the most important slides when it comes to this video. The first slide talked about its market cap. There's 350 last mile um, delivery vehicles. Now, if they're able to convert all 350,000 of those vehicles, that market cap is $18 billion. But it's not realistic to think that all of them are going to convert to EV, at least not now. So how many of them are going to convert? And that's all going to come down to how much money is a company saving converting over from an ICE to an EV delivery truck. That's what this slide's all about. So they're saying within 20 years, you should, you should see approximately $170,000 in savings from converting from a gas to an e-gen truck. Now, this number is from Workhorse, so it might be a little diluted, but needless to say, even if it's $100,000, that's going to entice a lot of companies to change over from gas to EGEN. And if Workhorse is that leader and is able to take a lot of that market share, the numbers that they're going to be able to sell are going to be astronomical, and they're going to have to build a lot more plants to meet up with that demand. So when it comes down to it, I'm, I'm not so sure this is going to be a question of demand, but it's rather going to be a question of supply. Can Workhorse provide enough vehicles to really capitalize on that market? To date, they haven't been able to produce any of those vehicles. At the end of this year, they hope to produce um, 1,100, clear that backlog, and then after that, just keep on moving forward, acquiring new factories or building new factories, and increasing the amount of vehicles that they sell. This next slide talks about uh, potential competition when it comes to producing electronic work vans. You have Tesla, Ford, Freightliner, and then I don't even know how to pronounce that one, Chanjay. Um, of course, you know, this is a workhorse presentation, so everything's green for them, whereas um, Tesla has three green, three red, Ford has all red, Freightliner has all red, and then this one has two green and four red. Um, but anyways, the market cap for this has the potential to be huge. And it's going to be more than one company that's able to make money off of this. It might be three or four, to be honest with you. Well, what I like about Workhorse is that they're just focusing on this. Their entire business is built around whether or not they can build good electronic work vans and sell them and make money off of them. And they're starting to do that. And hopefully by the end of this year, we should see some numbers come in that's showing that they are making profit off of these vehicles and that they can sustain long-term growth. This next slide talks about the UPS and it talks about the orders that they've had. They've had six orders placed to date towing 1,345 vehicles. Um, they have 5 million miles driven by workhorse vehicles. They have had 345 Gen 1E series workhorse debt van deployed by UPS. Now, don't forget, they also are trying to get a contract with the USPS, United States Postal Services. That contract could be worth a ton of money, and if they nail that contract, this company is going to explode, and it's going to grow like nothing else. This next slide is important to talk about. I'm not going to get into all their partners. I'm going to talk about just one of their partners, and that is Duke Energy. When you convert over from a gas fleet to electric fleet, you need to have the charging infrastructure in place to quickly charge these vehicles overnight or when Whenever it needs to be so that they can go out and they can complete their fleet in one charge now Duke Energy is a leader when it comes to providing energy solutions they are a ginormous company and they're a great partner to have um, Duke Energy has agreed to partner up with workhorse and help provide charging infrastructures um, with companies that do business with workhorse this next slide goes into the scale of the contract opportunity and this is something that's really exciting investors um, just beware that if they don't win this contract there's huge risk involved but the contract could be upwards towards 6.3 billion billion dollars that's a huge contract opportunity i really hope this company wins it i want it to go to an american company um, and i think if they can do it, that would be great for them. And as a as a shareholder, you're really going to reap the benefits from that contract. And that, that, that contract can put this company's name on the map. 
and help them sell all of their other vehicles as well to other companies. All right, right now we're looking at the quarter three 2019 earnings report, which was um, it's for the quarterly period ended September 30th of 2019. With that being said, this company will release its quarter four 2019 earnings on March 16th pre-market. So that is very close to today. Um, so I wouldn't really jump into this company, me personally. And I have to say this in every video, I am not a professional advisor. So please do your own due diligence before investing or trading in any stock. Just have to get that out of the way. I personally would wait to the next earnings just to see if things are um, continuing to go down the right path. In their earnings report, there are a few things to look at. Um, this company is not profitable. So how much uh, money are they losing? Or what's their loss per share? Their EPS, their earnings per share. How much cash does this company have? Being that it is not a profitable company and it is a growth company, how much cash do they have to expand their business and to grow? Scrolling down, we'll get into the cash to start um, and you'll see how it has grown. So um, from December 31st, 2018 to September 30th of 2019, that cash and cash equivalents increased from 1.5 million to 9.3 million. Their total assets increased from 11.8 uh, million to 28 million. Their liabilities also increase from 18.9 million to 39.4 million. We had an article that showed that they secured a loan to help them finish up their production line so that they can start producing and clearing out that backlog. That loan is a liability and it increased their total liability. Their long-term debt was reduced slightly and the total liabilities and stockholders equity increased from 11.8 million to 28 million. Next up, let's get into the sales for the company. Talking about the sales of the company, they decreased from 2018 to 2019. Um, on the earnings call, they were saying that's because they're really just focused on getting their C-series complete, getting their production facility in order so that they can start um, producing these trucks and selling them um, and clearing out their backlog in 2020. So if they're able to do so, that's fine. I'm okay with that. So you're going to see a loss across the board from 2018 to 2019 in this regard. Their earnings per share was a negative 0.42 and now it's a negative 0.6. Um, that wraps it up for the earnings report. Let's jump on to Thinkorswim very quickly and look at the charts for this stock. Okay, quickly going over the charts. This is the 180 day four hour chart for Workhorse. Now keep in mind that this, if anything, is a long term investment. Um, but I always look at the chart in every video and I'm not gonna make it different for this company. Looking at the chart right now, your um, 180 day high is at 5.34, where your 180 day low is 2.05. And it's currently trading at just above $3. Today is February 27th of 2020. Looking at the charts, you can just quick and dirty see some levels of support. You can see one right here around here, I would say, because you have these two, those two levels of support, which is corresponding to its current price. Be interesting to see whether or not this holds or if it drops down lower. And then you're looking at a level of support that is around this, which is 2.75, give or take. Okay, let's jump into the one year to see how this company is trading on the one year chart, one year, one day. Um, and this is what I was talking about with the price of the, UP, uh, the USPS contract being in the current stock price. So you can kind of see that it went from 51 cents up to five dollars came down started trading somewhat sideways and it's still trading sideways here there is a lot of risk in play here that if this company does not win the usps contract that it drops back down to here unless production of the c-series vehicle is enough to outstand that deficit um, so there are risks when it comes to this company but this company is 
all about long-term growth and if you if you believe in the business that it's trying to sell all right with all that being said and all those factors mixed in what am i going to do when it comes to workhorse and i am going to hold off on buying workhorse for right now this is a company that i do like the business that they're trying to pursue i think the market for this business is huge and if they can succeed and take some of that market share they will do just fine as a company but there are some things that are holding me off from investing in this company right now one with the next earnings call being on march 16th um i'm only a couple weeks away from that earnings and i just want to see how the company is doing and you know use that earnings as a reassurance that this company is still on the right track two the current price right now has some of that usps contract built into it and there is a lot of risk involved if they don't win that contract and then third this company hasn't really sold many vehicles i don't know how the vehicle is itself is it a good product or not is it something that businesses actually want um so i'm gonna wait to see how the company does at the end of 2020 and if they're able to complete their backlog and maybe we'll get some reviews on the product itself and then lastly there is competition when it comes to this market workhorse is a smaller company and they don't have that much money to work with compared to ford tesla and your other legacy companies so the competition is there this is a market that companies are going to want to get into but workhorse has been doing a lot of work up front and they're trying to push into this industry before everyone else and they have the potential to be a great company in this sector these are all things that i think can happen um i'm just not ready to invest in this company yet i want to see a couple more good signs before i start throwing my dollars at them um but with that being said i'm going to keep a very close eye on this company it's going to stay on my watch list for the next couple years and i'm going to stay tuned and hopefully so are you um, because if this company sets out to do what they want to do they are going to make a ton of money and in return god bless those shareholders because they're going to be rolling in the dough okay so that about wraps it up for this video i thank you so much for your time thank you so much for sticking around to the end please hit that subscribe button smash that like button and add a comment if you have any questions regarding workhorse or just investing in general if you aren't familiar with this channel you also know there's a facebook group for everyday investors a link is provided in the video descriptions on how you can join. Other than that, thank you once again for watching this video. And this is We Are Investing, and together we are invincible.